Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters and thank you for joining me for the 26th episode in my series on the most important women in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today's segment is the second of a few detailing the life of the daughters of the Rasul. Rukaya radiallahu anha is the second daughter born to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Khadija radiallahu anha. She and Umm Kulthum, the third daughter, were very close as Zainab was a bit older than them and Fatima was much younger. These two sisters grew up as if they were twins and shared almost everything. Rukhaya and Umm Kulthum got engaged at the same time to brothers who just happened to be the sons of Abu Lahab. Abu Talib, the Prophet peace be upon him's uncle, came to him and asked for his daughter's hands in marriage on behalf of Abu Lahab. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him for some time so he could go ask his daughters. They had a small family meeting with the girls and Khadija radiallahu anha. They were hesitant, but in the end, they all agreed to the proposal and the marriage contracts were signed. Soon afterwards, the prophethood descended upon Muhammad, peace be upon him, and everything changed for them all. Rukaya and Umm Kulthum suffered with their marriages they were living at this time in the very nest of hatred and intrigue against the Prophet, peace be upon him, and Islam. Their husbands, Utba and Nutaiba, sons of Abu Lahab and Umm Jamil. Umm Jamil was known to be a hard and harsh woman who had a sharp and evil tongue. It was mainly because of her that Khadija was not pleased with the marriages of her daughters in the first place. It must have been painful for Rukaya and Umm Kulthum to be living in the household of such enemies who not only joined but the led the campaign against their father. The struggles of Rukaya and Umm Kulthum can still be seen today. While their struggles were directly connected to the Prophet's work to spread Islam, the difficulties they faced with their in-laws are similar to the pains that many couples face, both young and old. The outside influences of in-laws can bring great tension between husbands and wives by way of their parents trying to control their kids who are recently married. Financial requests, gossiping, and evil whispers about marriage matters that do not concern them are often burdens placed between new couples. You see, marriage is a bond formed between a husband and a wife with Allah. When you get married, it is your duty to love and respect your spouse's parents as your own but as parents, you must also understand that the marriage of your children, young couples, give them certain rights to privacy and the freedom to make their own decisions for the betterment of their life together and their household. Meddling from in-laws is never welcomed unless your advice is requested. Parents should be a safe haven for their married children, not sources of negativity. Be joy spots so your children, son-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, grandchildren would yearn for your company and the opportunity to assist you in your old age, not shun from your nagging. As a mark of disgrace to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his family, the son-in-laws were prevailed by their parents to divorce their wives. They were blessed with wonderful wives who can be better than the children of the dear Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam himself? Yet the negative influences of their parents forced them to break their vows of marriage and ultimately brought about their own disgrace and demise. Despite all of the hardships, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam welcomed his daughters back open hearted and encouraged his daughters to put their trust in Allah. So sure enough, for Ruqayya, Uthman ibn Affan, one of the most dignified, gracious, righteous, bashful, noble, wealthy men of all the Quraysh, came into her life. Uthman was very well known for his lineage and wealth, but he was also the most loved man. He was so loved that the mothers of the Quraysh would sing a lullaby to their children that went, By Allah, I love you, as the Quraysh love Uthman. There was once a story reported by Azubair that the Prophet peace be upon him had sent a man with a gift to Uthman and Rukaya, and the man came back late. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him, "Do you want me to inform you about what delayed you?" The man nodded. You stood there looking at Uthman and Rukaya, admiring their beauty.
replied the Prophet, peace be upon him. When the persecution of the Muslims started to get too intense, the Rasul allowed whoever could to migrate to Abyssinia. Uthman and Rukayya were amongst those who decided to migrate, but Rukayya found it so hard to say goodbye to her family. The trip to Abyssinia was long and difficult. The Muslims lived in Abyssinia for months and some of them years. They took up jobs according to their professions and were not a burden on the king or his people. There were times of stress, but overall, the time they spent there was peaceful. However, they were all still thinking about home. And none more than Rukaya, who was yearning to see her sisters and her parents. Then news came that Hamza and Umar ibn al-Khattab had accepted Islam, and some saw this as a good time to come home. They thought surely if these two great men had become Muslims, then they would be safe. Rukaya and Uthman were amongst the first group to leave Abyssinia. When they arrived in Mecca, however, they were disappointed and stunned to see the extent at which the brutality against the Muslims had gone. Rukaya immediately went to her family's house. She kissed her sister, she kissed her father. Then she asked about her mother, only to learn that she had passed away while Rukaya was in Abyssinia. This broke her heart and she wept profusely. She prayed for her mother and she resigned her fate to Allah. It wasn't long before Rukaya became pregnant and gave birth to a boy, Abdullah. The baby filled their life with joy after so much hardship and sorrow. When Abdullah was two years old, they joined those that migrated to Medina. However, as all believers go through trials, Rukaya was about to endure yet another very difficult trial. One day, Abdullah was sleeping in his cradle when a rooster pecked him in the eyes. This led to an infection that claimed his life a few days later. Rukaya was so distraught by the death of her son that she became very ill. Uthman lovingly and affectionately stood by her and took care of her while she was sick, but eventually she passed away. As Uthman was kissing her forehead, the announcement was made in the city of the Muslim victory in the Battle of Badr. Prophet Muhammad wasallam came back stunned to find his daughter dead. He and Fatima wept for her and stood by, consoling each other and Uthman. The Prophet, peace be upon him, sorrowly performed the funeral prayers. He returned to his home after burying his daughter, carrying his struggles with him, and he continued to deliver his message of Islam. Uthman later married Rukayya's sister, Umm Kulthum, because she was so close in character to Rukayya. Tomorrow, inshallah, we will learn about Umm Kulthum and their marriage. May Allah be pleased with them. Throughout it all remained strong. Rukaya was strong in her faith and left her fate to Allah. Many people these days might go through similar situations like Rukaya and their faith becomes tested. However, Rukaya's story shows that whenever Allah takes something away, it is to give you something greater in return, even if it is not in this life. Until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.